Hello, my name is Alex Richardson with Logic. Today I'll be showing you how to publish a modern InTouch application. We'll cover a number of details like how to make a backup before you publish and what development looks like when working with a modern app. Let's get started. Over here on my left is my development computer. This would be like your virtual machine you have on your laptop that you do all your development work on. On my right is Workstation One, WS1. This would be your production in-touch computer. Um, maybe it's controlling a single machine, it's standalone. Um, just an in-touch runtime. Okay. Back to the left here, I'm going to click the new in-touch app icon in my InTouch application manager. I'm given a choice between modern InTouch app and legacy InTouch app. A modern InTouch app means we're going to use Orchestra Graphics. A legacy means we're not. If you're sure you don't want to work with Orchestra Graphics, this would be your selection. If you're sure you want to work with Orchestra Graphics, this would be your selection. If you're not sure either way, I recommend selecting modern because um, Orchestra Graphics are so valuable and there's just a couple little details which I'm covering in this video you'll need to, to know when working with it. Next, okay, InTouch apps, great, that's where I keep my apps. I'm going to give this a simple self-describing name like App1. Yours would be like Line1 or Packaging, but I'm keeping it simple here. I'll go ahead and view the details since this is a technical education video. Um, Really what we're looking at here is a database is being made. So that's something that's unique to Orchestra Graphics. That's uh, what a modern app is all about. I can show you the database. It's really abstracted away from you where you don't have to deal with it. But if I launch my SQL Server tool here, look at my list of databases. I just have some Wonderware databases here. but. This database with a bunch of characters and numbers is the InTouch app database. Um, it's given that name just so it's unique, so it doesn't conflict with anything, um, but you never have to deal with it. That's actually something called a GUID, which is Guaranteed Unique ID. Anyways, that's just so you know. Now if I click Window Maker, just like I would with a typical standalone InTouch application, it's going to launch my development tool. I'm going to make a window with a self describing name. Then add an orchestra graphic. There's a bunch of options here, but I'm just going to go with a nautical clock. Great. So my development work is done. Now I want to publish this app. You'll see if I right click on app one, I can select publish. But before I do that, I'm going to do an export because it's my development habit to make a backup before I transfer my work out to runtime. Okay, And this is different than what we've done in the past. In the past, an InTouch app has been a folder full of files, and it still is, but I don't just make a copy of that. I have to go through this uh, right click export process so just a touch more work but um, but it's great so I select export here get the normal Windows Explorer thing click go with a date that's my habit with development is put a date on my work What this is doing is it's pulling the orchestra graphics references out of a database. It's grabbing all the folders and files and it's putting it into a single compressed file um, that we in the technical Wonderware community can refer to, refer to as the AAPKG, which is just uh, an extension on that file. So great, I've got a backup. Now I'm going to right click on App 1, select Publish. Before I just put it on my desktop, I need to make a folder. So this is a common mistake people make. So they have don't have a folder. 
and all my files, my windows, my tag name dictionary, all that stuff would have got spread out all across my desktop. But here it's nicely contained in a folder called App1. So I'll right click on this and copy and paste over remote desktop to my runtime computer. Now real world, how you typically transfer it is with a flash drive. You put it on your flash drive off your laptop, walk out to the machine on the floor, put your flash drive in that machine, copy over the files. Okay? If you're fortunate enough to be able to remote desktop into the computer, it's a nice feature of uh, being able to copy and paste to save time. Okay. This will take another, I'm guessing, 30 seconds, not 19 minutes. Something to note about this folder of files, the published copy of the app, I can't edit it in Window Maker. It's only for runtime. Right? It's a compiled copy of my app. It's not for development work. Okay, So this is not a backup. People are used to, hey, I got, a, got the folder full of files. I've got my backup. That's not the backup. It's the file I made ending in extension AAPKG. That's your backup. OK, anyways, got my app on my desktop here. I'm going to hit the binoculars, just like I always do with InTouch Application Manager. Select App 1. Now I'm going to click on Window Viewer to launch it. After I highlight, look at this, it says Published. has a little bit different looking icon on it. But other than that, it's really the same thing. Window Maker's not accessible. Only Window Viewer. Select Window 1. All right, now I've successfully published an InTouch app. Um, really pretty similar to what we're used to, but the big difference there is I need to right click on the app, then select publish. And before that, I need to right click and do the export to have a proper backup of my InTouch application. And that's important enough that I will show you how to do that one more time. Just right click, export, that's how you make a backup when working with a modern InTouch application. Okay, thank you and uh, have a good day. Let us know if you have any questions.